YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. I'm going to continue reading the article that I have taken uh, too long to read. I apologize for not being diligent every single day. Um, the title of the article is Testing the Validity of the International Atomic Energy Agency Safety Culture Model. We are in the results area of it all. I've read all the previous. We have five more pages left. Uh, we are on section 2.3.4. 5.1 and I'm going to continue and I'll read a little bit longer today so we can get through this because like I said we got five pages of the left which is a lot <clears throat> the large correlations between the five dimensions of the IAEA model suggest that a one-factor model could be more suitable to, to represent the IAEA's attributes to evaluate this possibility, we fit a one-factor model and compared the results to the five-factor model. In fact, this is an advantage of applying CFA as it allows test, testing different conceptualizations of the data or competing models and helps researchers to retain the best fitting model. The results show that the one-factor model provide a satisfactory fit to data. The one-factor model was compared to the five-factor model proposed by the IAEA, both in terms of statistical and practical significance. Focusing on statistical significance and considering that uh, Satora showed that the difference between the two nested models in the satora bentler scaled chi-square for overall model fit which is applied using the RML method of estimation, does not yet does not yield the correct Satora Bentler scale difference. We applied the correction proposed by Satora and Bentler 2001. Focusing on practical significance, i.e. substantive differences between models, it is widely accepted that differences in the NNFI and the CFI lower than 0 0.01 indicate irre irrelevant differences between the models. In addition, Chen also suggests that significant differences not larger than 0 0.015 in RMS RMSEA would suggest negligible practical differences. <clears throat> the results of the comparison showed a significant differences between the two models. However, the differences in the NNFI, CFI, and RMSEA between the five and one scale factor models suggest that although statistically significant, the differences are irrelevant from a practical point of view. These results indicate that pursuing the parsimony pr principle, the one-factor model will represent the empirical data better than the five-factor model, bringing into question the adequacy of the attributes to assess the safety culture model as proposed by the IAEA. Despite these results, we decided to explore the internal structure of the IAEA model without the restrictions imposed by the confirmatory analysis approach for two reasons. On the one hand, the first two studies in this paper suggested that a number of attributes of the model were related to the dimensions which, according to the IAEA, they belong to. This indicated that although far from the IAEA proposal, some of the attributes of the model may be grouped under the same dimensions. On the other hand, as reported in the previous CFA, some of the inter-factor correlations seem to be empirically, empirically discriminable. 2.3.5.2 Explanatory Analysis the PCA of the 37-item culture model produced five factors with Eugen, Eugen values, Eugen values, I don't know what that word means, E-I-G-E-N, V-A-L-U-S, Egan values, greater than one, which accounted for 64% of the total variance. The way the attributes were grouped by the PCA were very different from the IAEA proposal. 
Several points did not support the adequacy of this structure to represent the safety culture construct. First, 50% of the total variance explained was accounted for by the first factor. And the scree plot clearly suggests retaining only one factor. Second, when trying to label the five factors that met the Kaiser rule, researchers found difficulty in conceptually interpreting each of these factors. For example, attributes 1a, a1, A6, C1, C2, D3, D5, E2, E4, which seem to be grouped under the same factor, refer to quite different aspects of safety culture that cannot easily be included under the same label. Items such as C1 and C2 refer to accountabilities and responsibilities. A6 and E2 refer to safety behaviors. D3 and D5 refer to conditions to act safely. And A1 could be understood as a mixture of conditions for safety and safety behaviors. Third, some of the items show that low loadings of all the factors, i.e. Uh, less than 40, and that means B3, B6, D1, D2, D4, D8, D9, E4, and E5, and this is what we're talking about. These are, these are the scales. I think you can see that. That's what that is. Um, and several items cross-loaded for more than one factor. So some of these things, I guess, are cross-loaded. All factor loadings cannot be checked on Table 8. Fourth, some factors did not contain the recommended minimum of three items per factor. When the minimum value to consider that an item loads on any given factor was 0.30 to 0.35, as recommended by Spectre in 1992, the factor contained just three items. The fourth factor was two. The fourth factor had only two, E3 and E4. But when the cutoff point was 0 0.40, as recommended by Hare et al. in 1998, the third factor contained two items, and the fourth factor contained only one. Wow. Although the reasons for choosing PCA have been explained, see section 2.3.4.2, the authors decided to perform exploratory factor analysis. That's called EFA, exploratory factor analysis to see if a better factorial solution could emerge. The EFA also result, resulted in the retention of five factors, which showed the same problems as the PCA in terms of explanation variance and loading factors. Finally, because of the use of the Kaiser criterion alone may overestimate the number of factors to retain. PCAs were carried out forcing the number of factors to 2, 3, and 4. Of these options, only the two-factor solution seemed to be interpretable, but the authors could not support this solution because one of the factors accounted for 50% out of the 55 total variants explained. 2.3.6 Conclusions Factor analysis, CFA, PCA, and EFA, of the answers given by the sample of workers from the NPP, nuclear power plants, to a questionnaire based on the IAEA model, failed to support the dimensionality of this model. Results from these analyses could not support any alternative multidimensional structure either. Moreover, it seems that the IAEA's attributes may be better understood as part of a unique one dimension, name, namely safety culture. Huh. Discussion 3.0. Discussion. This is the first time that the validity of the IAEA model and the psychometric properties of the attributes that underpin the model have been investigated. Results from three independent but complementary studies could not support the correspondence between the IAEA's attributes and the dimensions proposed by the model. 
Consequently, substantial evidence to support the validity of this model was not found. Our findings suggest that most of the attributes of the IAEA model may not be related to the dimensions to which they are supposed to belong. And that is, most of the attributes included in the IAEA model may not be measuring the dimensions they are intended to measure. Well, that's like not a surprise. Furthermore, according to our results, the IAEA safety culture model as it stands could have a one-dimensional structure instead of a five-dimensional structure that the IAEA proposes. We believe that the conclusions from these three empirical studies included in this paper provide a useful addition to the discourse on safety culture as they open the door for improvement of a widely used model that has the potential to change nuclear safety outcomes. I don't think they're concerned about nuclear safety outcomes, folks. We consider two possible explanations for our results. First, the five dimensions of the IAEA model may not be appropriately reflected in the essence of safety culture. In this scenario, the attributes of the model may be good indicators of the construct of safety culture, even though they are not related to the dimensions of, that the IAEA proposes. That could either mean that as a result, as our results suggest, the attributes of the model are part of a one-dimensional construct, supposedly safety culture, or that the other dimensions distinct from these, those proposed by the IAEA may need to be included in the model. Or, excuse me, not those, but that other dimensions. In other words, maybe they've left something out. Nevertheless, this last option seems less likely as our results could not support any factorial solution apart from a one-dimensional structure. Second, the five dimensions of the IAEA model may appropriately reflect the essence of safety culture, but some of the attributes may not be adequate to assess these dimensions. In this case, the dimensions of the model should be kept and the inclusion of better indicators or attributes of these dimensions should be considered. All in all, it seems reasonable to think that our studies were not able to empirically reproduce the IAEA model due to a combination of these two explanations, non-adequacy of some dimensions and non-adequacy of some attributes. For example, it seems at first glance that some attributes of the model may overlap or go relationships between managers and individuals are built on trust and trust permeates the organization. See how those kind of overlap? We noted in section 1.2 that two dimensions of the model, safety is clearly a recognized value and safety is integrated into all activities, may be too general and wide in scope, as these two broad dimensions could cover many of the attributes of the model. They may have contributed to the overlap among the five dimensions and the one-dimensional structure supported by our results. Discovering the reasons behind the weak correspondence between the attributes and the IAEA's dimensions is essential to understanding how the proposed model could be evaluated and improved. To help with this purpose, the IAEA is encouraged to share additional information regarding the origin and development of the model. Were the attributes developed first? If so, how were they grouped and under which criteria were the dimensions labeled? Or on the contrary, were the dimensions developed first? If so, how were they identified and further operation, operationalized through the attributes? How many minutes? We have 15 minutes. I think I'll stop here. Wow. So whatever they want to do, it's A-OK -okay with them, right? That seems to be the deal. Let's ask the IAEA how they came up with this safety culture model that doesn't work. Well, we're all living with nuclear waste everywhere in the United States and around the world, frankly. 70 years of lies has got to end. Put your courage feet on, you guys. Um, I'm going to put out a video uh, on a different topic, but uh, sort of related.
Ciao, you guys. Take care.